I Wish I Wish by Paul Shipton Chapter 1 Something for Nothing Debbie counted out the money for the tenth time. It didn't add up too much, even with the money from her old piggy bank and the coins she had found down the back of the couch. One pound and thirty-four pence, to be exact. You should look after your money, said her sister, Dickie. Save up instead of buying things you don't need. Vicky was full of sensible advice, and Debbie always found it useless. You could get a job like me. Vicky did a paper round every morning and every afternoon. Every week she put the money away in a savings account. Debbie liked the idea of having money, but she didn't like the idea of earning it. Getting out of her nice snug bed on wet and windy mornings, yuck. She said there isn't time for me to get a job, not before Mum's birthday, and I'll never get her a good present with this money. Vicky looked up from her homework. Oh, I don't know. You've got enough to buy one glove. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. Vicky shrugged. You can't get something for nothing, she said. Debbie let out a sigh. Her sister was right. She'd never be able to afford a nice present, but then it hit her. There were a second-hand shop on the high street. She would be able to find a present there, even if it wasn't brand new. After all she told herself, it's the thought that counts. Twenty minutes on speedy bike ride later, Debbie was standing inside the second-hand shop. It was cramped and gloomy, and it was picked, packed full of all kinds of things, old tables and chairs, rusty bikes, frames and old photos. Some of the stuff looked okay, but most of it, well, junk was the word that popped into Debbie's head. That's that's more when there were no price tags. Debbie had no idea which things she could afford. The man behind the counter didn't rush to help. He sat there as still as a statue reading his newspaper. Debbie was starting to think this hadn't been such a good idea after all. And then she saw it. It was a small brass lamp. It was old and battered. That's because it's an antique. Debbie told herself, and Mum loves antiques. She picked it up carefully. It was perfect. Or at least it would be perfect once it had been cleaned up. But did she have enough money to buy it? Uh, how much is this? The man's eyes flickered up from his paper from an instant. One pound, thirty-four pence, he said. Debbie couldn't believe it. That was exact how much money she had. It was a sign. This was the right present to buy. I'll take it. Chapter 2, Mr Blood Money Chapter 2, Mr Blood Money Debbie put the lamp carefully into the basket on her bike. She didn't want to bash it up anyways. More on the ride home. She was about to set off when a big fast car pulled up outside the shop. No, make that. That a hug fast car. The thin-faced man was a long coat stepped out. He was followed by a big man in a suit, mirror, got sunglasses, even thought I wasn't sunny. He must be a god bodyguard, thought Debbie. The two men marched into the shop. I never knew people like came second hand shops, thought Debbie. This was a shrug. When he hopped to her bike, she started rendering home when she couldn't wait to show Vicky the lamp she had only been riding for a few minutes when she heard beeping horn behind her she was the same big car over it overtook her scream screeched to a halt Debbie only managed to break in time the rear window was slowly down and then thin faced man learned out to the man gave the thin lipped breath in the lit smile, it didn't look, didn't set Debbie's mind at rest. My apologies, he said. Jenkins, my driver is sometimes a little too keen. Let me introduce myself in this, in names, Charles Blood Money. This, his smile wended and Debbie saw all the teeth gleaming, gleaming, it made her like think of a crocodile of course she knew that she should not talk 
to strangers and she was about to cycle away. But then Blood Money said, you must wonder why we we'll stop it stopped you. Well, for many years, have been looking for something this morning. I told I might find a secret hand shop and I went there as quickly as I could, but found so it was it's a lamp. This Blood Money wanted the lamp very struggled. Oh, well, better luck next time. Blood Money's eyes were cold. I'm afraid you do not understand the lamp. It's not a vi viewable, valuable, <laughs> valuable in time of money, but it has great yeah. sentimental value to me. I want that lamp. I am willing to buy it for you. Debbie let out a gasp. She heard right. One hundred pounds. It was incredible. She took the lamp out of a basket, ready to hand it over. But then she saw a twinkling of greed in Blood Muddy's eyes, and the new thought jumped out of her mind. Hold on, maybe it's worth more than one hundred pound. Much more. She shook her head. I don't think so. One thousand pound then. I'll give you one thousand for it. Blood Money's voice got louder. There were two little red spots ex of ex excitement on the cheeks. Maybe didn't know what to say. A thousand pounds was a lot of money, but maybe this lamp was worth every more. Maybe it was a priceless antique. There was something about Mr. Blood Money that Debbie didn't trust. She shook her head one more time and the smile on Blood Money's face vanished. He fixed her with a glare as cold as a fish's and shouted to the other man inside the car. Enough! Get me out! No! This big man in the sunglasses leaped out of the car and rushed towards her. He was fast, but Debbie was hard to beat on a bicycle. She tossed the lamp back into the basket and was already pedalling away. Down the road, she heard the big man huff and puff as he tried to keep up with her on foot. Oi! Come here, you little brat! She heard the car roar into life again. It wouldn't take long to catch up with her, but there was a footpath ahead. No car could follow her along that, if she could only make it there. She forced her legs to go faster. Behind her, there were a roar of engines. The big car was getting closer and closer, nearly there. Just before the car caught up with her, Debbie swerved onto the footpath. She was safe! Behind her, she could hear the angry blur of her car's horn and the howl of rage from inside the car. She cycled home as fast as she could. Chapter 3 The Secret Lamp